This was the scene at the end of last season as the California Quakes celebrated their Founders Cup victory over the New York Enforcers. Tonight on Roller Jam, the long-awaited rematch is sure to feature hard hits and hot tempers. Meanwhile, new WSL general manager Kenneth Loeb III has begun a crusade to rid the league of lewd behavior, sex, and violence. Loeb's first move was to suspend Enforcer Captain Mark D'Amato. Now, the Enforcers are threatening to boycott tonight's game in support of their often demonic leader. The season's gonna go on with or without them. Tonight, worlds collide on Roller Jam. To Roller Jam. I'm Rory Marcus along with Lee Hawk Rareman. Opening night, the World Skating League from the fabulous MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. And we have a highly anticipated matchup. I wish that was all we had to talk about. I really do. But even tonight, there is controversy swirling around the WSL on opening night. Let's get the very latest from Broadway Danny Wolf at the locker room. Let's send it right now to Danny. We haven't even had the first jam of the season yet, and already massive controversy. The New York Enforcers were supposed to skate against the California Quakes, but I'm here with Mark D'Amato and Tim Washington, who were obviously not dressed to skate. Mark, I know you've been suspended indefinitely by the new general manager, Kenneth Logue III. Does this mean there's no game tonight? First of all, Chump, being suspended doesn't bother me. I've been suspended before, and it never sticks. Second of all, there'll be no game tonight. The enforcers are in support of me, and they will back me up and not take the track. And Tim, as, you're, as a teammate of Mark D'Amato, you're behind him. You think that the enforcers shouldn't skate until he's reinstated in the league? That's right, Danny. If Mark D'Amato says the New York enforcers will not skate, we will not skate. Wow, already controversy <laughs> in the World Skating League on opening night as Mark D'Amato is suspended. The enforcers will not skate. Well, all week we've prepared for this Founders Cup right. rematch from last season with the Quakes and the enforcers. And leave it to Mark D'Amato of the enforcers and Jerry Seltzer's office, the commissioner with this Logue fella, to totally take all our hard work and toss it up and hey we're in vegas what a great place to start and why not start the season off with a little controversy as well well the california quakes know one thing they are the defending champions of the world skating league and whether they have an opponent or not hawk they're out here they're ready to skate and they're ready to win this first game of the new season well you see the freshly shaved head of chad vaughn there the fans are here they're ready and pumped but the question is, who the heck are they going to be playing, these California Quakes? We have just heard a few moments ago that Denise Loden has made a deal. You see Kenneth Logue on the right, the new uh, general manager of the World Skating League, to go ahead and let the Sun Dogs skate in place of the Enforcers. They're getting ready. They're going to come out and play this first game, believe it or not. Well, I got a question. You see Bill Barker there. You know, he's a game day player. You know he always is ready to play. But you got a question, what the heck are they going to do without any preparation, Rory? Well, here come the California Quakes onto the track, and I'll tell you what, Hawk, they couldn't care less how much preparation the Sun Dogs have had because the Quakes are still riding a high from winning the championship last season. Stacy Blitch, cartwheels onto the track, and that ought to tell you something, they're ready to go. Well, and speaking of high, these California Quakes are also really high as the Bod Squad recently was pictorial to TV Guide, Rory. We know Stacy Blitch loves that. Oh, she didn't mind that at all. The California Quakes would love to get off on a winning foot here in this first game. The bot squad is ready to go. I don't think they really care who they're playing. Sean Anderson certainly doesn't. I don't even know if he's aware who he's playing as the game goes along. But tonight, it's going to be the Sun Dogs and not the Enforcers. And here come the Florida Sun Dogs. And I'll tell you what, they might not have been prepared earlier for this game, but they look ready right now. Well, they look ready, but conspicuously absent is Denise Lone Rory. I talked about lack of preparation coming out here as Bill Barker poses for the crowd. Denise Lowe may be having some equipment problems that may haunt them all night. She made the deal. We know she's not injured. Bill Barker is ready to go on the men's side. Whoa, wait a minute. She is ready to go. I'll tell you what, there she is. There's all of her. Well, she's got me ready to go too, Rory. I tell you what, Denise Lowe, I love you. Apparently, she's going to skate the game in that outfit. Sean Atkinson isn't particularly enamored of seeing his girlfriend out here skating, not in a standard-issue uniform, but instead in this little getup. Well, what the heck does Sean Atkinson know? 
<laughs> the California Quakes look a little stunned right now. Broadway Danny Wolf is in the infield with Denise. Denise, this is obviously not your game night attire. What happened to your uniform? I tell you what, the enforcer women came into my locker room, ripped my jersey up, and I have to wear this because I'm going to skate. It's not going to keep me from skating, and if they think it is, they've got another thing coming. And how about Mark D'Amato before the game saying, you guys are the scab dogs. You shouldn't be even skating. You know what? Mark D'Amato is a loser, and he'll always be a loser. We owe it to the fans to skate. We signed a contract, and we're going to skate. This is Roller Jam. There's no game like it. Good luck, Denise. Thank you. Here are the rules of Roller Jam. There are four six-minute periods. The women skate periods one and three. The men skate periods two and four. There are five skaters per team, two jammers, and three blockers. The blockers wear white helmets. The jammers have the black helmet with the stripe. Points are scored when jammers lap opposing team members. Here's an example of what I was just talking about. The jammer for the green team breaks out from the pack and circles the track. For each member of the red team that he or she passes, one point is earned. Well, but don't tell Stacy Blitch and Denise Loden about the rules, Rory, because they don't care. Stacy Blitch of the California Quakes packs power, packs speed. She jams, she blocks, and Denise Loden of the Florida Sun Dogs does the same as these two monsters here in the World Skating League go. So go their teams, Rory. And Denise Loden in that incredible outfit as we get set to start the first game of the season. The California Quakes and the Florida Sun Dogs. This should be a great one, Hawk. I can't wait to see what happens. And here we go. The first jam is underway. Debbie Rice and Amy Craig out on the first jam of the night. That's Amy Craig for the Quakes and Debbie Rice in the yellow and orange of the Florida Sun Dogs. Well, and if you were looking for speed right out of the chute, we got it right here. Debbie Rice and Amy Craig, two of the fastest, if not the fastest, in the World Skating League. Denise Loden's back to block as Debbie Rice goes up and tries to get some points. So far, neither one of them has been able to score. Boy, that's tough blocking in the back of the pack. And what's Denise Loden about to do? Rory picked up where she left off last season, took a page right out of Sean Atkinson's playbook. You saw a Texas Bulldog. Amy Craig slow to get up, and you talk about starting the game and sending a message. The Sun Dogs, maybe they're a last-minute replacement in this game, but they're here to skate and play. Well, it's Stacey Blitz, Bulldog Debbie Rice. I tell you, if we were looking for a, a pregame jitters to take a while to work themselves out, these guys have came out and said, look, we're going to play powerful, and we are not going to take anything from anybody and Denise Loden and Stacey Blitch epitomized that for their respective teams. I think the locker room turmoil and the troubles with the new general manager, Kenneth Logue, has everybody on edge a little bit. I really do. And this is where it will come out on the track as the Sun Dogs get a jammer out right away. That's a number eight for the Sun Dogs, Gina Lombardo. She's a terrific skater. Well, Gina Lombardo last season was always a go-to girl as a jammer for the Sun Dogs, especially when Debbie Rice broke her wrist. She really came on and showed that she could play with anybody in the way. Jenny Matthews of the Quakes chases her as they edge up toward the back of the pack. So far, neither jammer has gotten the advantage, and there is no scoring in the game so far. Jenny Matthews is going to get a little help in the back of the pack, but then again, so is Gina Lombardo. Well, the Brook House right there for the California Quakes. She is one of the physical specimens here as a female in the World Skating League, and she really complements a lot of the team speed of the California Quakes. Really. Lombardo gets knocked down, and it's going to be the Quakes who get on the scoreboard first. Well, the Brook House, she was listening to me, and she just took a big high five from her teammate, Stacy Blitch, but the Brook House really came to play as well. One did nothing. The Quakes get on the board first, and we'll be back in just a minute to the MGM Grand Garden Arena. We're back in Las Vegas, and Sean Atkinson is not happy with his fiance Denise Loden right now. Why? Because of that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's the only guy in the building that's not happy, but Denise Loden doesn't have any pads on. I question the safety, actually, Rory, of that little outfit she's got on. Denise Loden gave a nice whip there to Debbie Rice. The speed skater's out, and a couple of them are out on this jam. As for the Quakes, Amy Craig along with Debbie Rice. Well, Debbie Rice last season, we talked about her having that broken wrist. She seems to have recovered fully as Amy Craig goes right down at the hands of Debbie Rice. There's nothing wrong with her elbow, and she comes up to the back of the pack with an assist from Denise Loden coming up. And there's one Florida Sun Dog point. 
Remember, they're trying to lap the skaters on the other team to score points, and that's exactly what Debbie Rice is doing. Ten seconds left in the jam as Rice is trying to get them all, Hawk. Well, Debbie Rice, she's got a little bit of a mouth on her, but what comes around goes around, and she sees it at the hands of Amy Craig, number 24. Debbie Rice got her at the beginning of the jam, Rory, but Amy Craig said, hey, I too can play at that game. Here's what I'm going to do to you. But Rice went up high on the track and got a couple of points, putting her Sundogs in the lead at 2-1. to one. The crowd seems divided, Hawk. Good crowd here in Las Vegas tonight. It seems they have an equal number of Quakes fans and Sucknog fans. Well, I wonder all the Enforcer fans with. They were expecting to see their Enforcers out here. We all know about the Mark D'Amato boycott. I tell you what, you can never, ex you always expect the unexpected from Mark D'Amato and the New York Enforcers. Two to one is the score. The Sundogs have the lead, and here we go, as Gina Lombardo's out there again for the Sundogs, but she's overmatched maybe. Two on one, let's see. She'll try and split the middle, but it won't work, will it? Absolutely. Jenny Matthews and Amy Craig. And I got to say that Amy Craig has really, we've called her name a lot so far, Rory. She has come out and said, I'm going to establish myself early this season in the World Skating League. But Denise Loden is in the back of the pack, and she says, come on, both of you, bring it on to me. And so far, they haven't been able to get by. Well, there's no mistaking Denise Loden out there, and that gold, <laughs> she looks like she could be out serving cocktails. But down. right after her, Rory, and says, hey, Denise Loden, two can play at that game. Her and Amy Craig are both saying, hey, we're here to play, people. It's the bot squad on the female side that really gets the Quakes going, and now they have the lead three to two. And Jenny, or Jamie Conamack of the Quakes says, give me that jammer's helmet, let me see what I can do out here. The jam keeps on going. Even if the period ends here, 45 seconds left in the jam, and they'll skate it out. When you see Stacy Blitz going out as a jammer, Rory, that showcases how able she is to be a great player here. We saw her show some physical play with a block, see a little more physical play there as she takes down Suzanne Shalene, and now, after she knocks down Suzanne Shalene, she may have a chance to score. And Denise Loden's nodding her head and saying, come on, Stacy, come on, let me get you back for that last one. Let's see if you can get by me now one-on-one. -on -one. And Denise throws the right elbow, and then the left elbow, and then the right again. Boy, it's not easy to get past Denise Loden one-on-one, -on -one, is it? I think Stacy Blitz oh! is about to find that out. Wow. Well, Denise Loden, this is the second time we've seen her. That was a little bit of a modified Bulldog. The first time we saw her Bulldog, Amy Craig. Now we see Denise, Stacy Blitz, and Denise. And Stacey Blitz goes right after her, Roy. Wow, I can't believe that. Stacy Blitz got up, and she wasn't finished yet, even though the period's over. And they're going to go out oh, in the infield. Well, I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. Kenneth Logue immerses himself where he shouldn't as the general manager of the World Skating League. He caused all this. Can you believe this is the first period of the first game of the season? Unbelievable. That's the end of the first period as Denise Loden takes her spot in the penalty box. And the score right now is 4-2. to two. But don't go anywhere because the men are about to take to the track. Big Bill Barker, Captain America. That guy is built. He'll be leading the Sundog men against the Ack Attack. Sean Atkinson and the California Quakes. The men coming up next. What does Atkinson have in mind for Barker and the Sundogs? We'll find out. It's the fabulous strip, and we're back at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. Four to two Quakes. Well, and if we thought the first period was fantastic, there's more to come. Captain America, the cleanest man in the world skating league, going up against Sean Atkins in the Ack Attack, who is, if not anything else, the most colorful man in the world skating league. He's always focused, always ready to play. He has a few other things on his mind, though, with his fiance Denise Loden being out there in that little outfit. He's already told her, here, put something else on, and she said, no way. And now we'll see.
see if Sean takes his frustrations out on the track. As here we go, the first men's jam of the night for the Florida Sun Dogs. That's Sam Martin. Boy, he's got speed, doesn't he? And he's out there against the Quakes' Tom Smith. Well, these teams are both setting the precedent here in this first game by say, saying we're going to use our big guns and use them the way we can. Sam Martin last season, always a big score. Tom Smith shows speed for the women. We saw Amy Craig and Debbie Rice out of the shoot. These teams are trying to set a precedent early, Rory. But the Ack attack goes to the back of the pack, and he knocks Sam Martin into the rail, and down goes Sam Martin. And now maybe the Quakes can get a point out of this. Martin, though, rails Tom Smith, and he's trying to go out. will get another shot at the Ack attack. 12 seconds left in the jam. Oh, my. That's a Captain America run. It's been a while since we saw it, and I know Sean Atkinson wishes he didn't get a review course in Captain America, but we're just talking about the power of Sean Atkinson. Bill Parker never wanted to be outdone. Shows the signature move by the same name, the Captain America. <laughs> These guys are wasting no time. We're in the fir first time we've seen the men, and they're already trying to kill each other. Wow. <laughs> and Atkinson says, what just hit me? But he'll be back. Don't worry about that. Well, at least one thing we could probably uh, assume is that he's, he's, he's no longer got his mind on his girlfriend's outfit. He better keep his eyes open. Or, I mean, he may not have any left. He's got his mind on Captain America right now. And it might stay there for the rest of the period. Four to two. The Quakes hold the lead. And the Quakes get the first jammer out. And uh, there he goes. That's another good speed skater. Number 25, Brian Krebs. He's got a good lead on the pack. And now the Quakes get two of them out. Following Krebs is Rusty Montgomery. But here comes, you talk about a speed skater, Sigmund Williams of the... Florida Sun Dogs is chasing. Well, Sigmund Williams, last time we saw him, he had a Texas Rustler uniform on. He was a hot and cold player last year. Very inconsistent, flashes of brilliance, but then quickly to obscurity. Let's see what he can do here. I tell you what, he's done a good job so far. He takes out two quakes, and now he'll take on Atkinson. And Sean's not in a very good mood right now. Sigmund Williams slips and falls, and the quakes have their jammers trying to catch him from the back. Now watch out. Oh! They took the act attack down again with a shot in the lower back. Two jams and twice the act attack has gone down. Well, Sean Atkinson, we know he can dole out a lot of punishment. But I tell you, the Captain America, the play before, and you saw a good shot by about 15 Sun Dogs, it seemed like right there. You have to question how much of that Sean Atkinson can take before some of his teammates, especially the person who Rusty Montgomery, have to take up for him. I'll say it again, don't worry about the act attack. He might be holding that right shoulder right now, but he'll be back in this game. He's gonna remember that. And the Quakes get the first jammer out. Whoop, slipped and fell, number uh, 26. Tony Santiago was out ahead of the pack and he slipped and fell. But now he gets back up and he's at it again. Remember the black helmeted jammers trying to lap the rest of the skaters to score points. What a, a complaint a lot of people have with Tony Santiago and Eric Slokney of the Quakes as they like to celebrate. We all know about the white pony and the low rider. Let's see if Tony Santiago may have matured a little. These two guys are young and aggressive and great physical specimens, but let's see if they have some maturity to go along with that ability this year, Rory. Gary Lockamy's out for the Sun Dogs, and as Santiago goes down, now Lockamy's the lead champ. But he's going to run smack into Rusty Montgomery in the back of that pack. If he gets by Montgomery, the Ack attack's waving. Oh, a little payback. A little payback to the Sun Dogs. Well, Rusty Montgomery, I said to look for him to help out a little bit with Sean Atkinson, and he's not done yet. He dies on Gary Lockerby and a little insult to injury. Boy, this is a tough game, isn't it, early in this game? Well, you got a lot of pregame jitters. These guys are working out. They're aggressive. They're excited. They've had a little bit of a layoff in preseason, but it's never like the games. And these guys get in here in front of the crowd, get pumped up, and we're seeing a lot of great play because of that. You talked about Eric Slopey a moment ago, and there he goes. He's out ahead of the pack, but getting a whip for the Sun Dogs is Sigmund Williams. And there's a couple of speed skaters out after each other. Oh! Rory, but I tell you what, the crowd loves 
it, I gotta admit, I kinda like it myself. Well, he's a thoroughbred, no question about it, and Atkinson's gonna help him through the pack, and there they go. Boy, they've got the Sun Dogs up over the rail, and Slopey's coming through to score some big quake points. Well, I said I wonder if Sean Atkinson can take some punishment, but with a big exclamation point, he says, hey, I can take a dish out plenty. He led the way for Eric Slobin to score the points on the jam, had enough left to, to rough it up even after the wrestle. Bill Parker, you said it, Rory. Payback can be ugly. Sean Atkinson remembered. You know, even though it seems like the Quakes are getting the worst of the physical play, they're ahead in this game 9-2 to two now. And one more jam left here in the men's period. The jams last 60 seconds, and they'll play it out even though the time clock for the period might be over. Let's see who gets out now as the Sun Dogs are trailing in this game by seven points. I know it's early, but you don't want to fall behind the Quakes by too many. Well, I'd love to see how Bill Barker reacts to that big shot from Sean Atkinson. We've watched Sean Atkinson. He reacted positively, came back, played great. Let's see how Bill Barker reacts at, at, after the punishment from Sean Atkinson. Sam Martin for the Sun Dogs, Tom Smith for the California Quakes. Oh, down goes Sam Martin, and I mean he went down hard. That leaves Tom Smith to challenge the back of the pack and to go up against Big Bill Barker. Barker well, must outweigh him by 50 pounds. Well, and Rory, Sam Martin was holding his back after that shot. If they lose the speed of Sam Martin in the court, scoring potential, they're in trouble. And a big shot from Sean Atkinson right back at Bill Barker. Did you mention payback a minute ago? The Ack attack tosses his helmet off and points to the crowd. He got his revenge. We saw the Captain America early. Sean Atkinson say, hey, Captain America, heads up. Here comes the Ack attack. I don't know if that was a Superman. I know it wasn't the skyscraper, but it sure was ugly. If you just ask Bill Barker, Captain America, and he'll tell you. Actually, I don't think he's saying much of anything right now. He's flat on his back, and Sean Atkinson is back in his team's huddle with the Quakes ahead. 10 to 2. We're back to Las Vegas in just a minute. Welcome back to Las Vegas, Rory Marcus and Lee Hawk Rearman. Tonight, the California Quakes and the Florida Sun Dogs. It was to have been the enforcers here on opening night. The Sun Dogs took the game at the last moment, and Denise Loden came out in a uniform I've never seen before. Well, and I hope we see a lot of it again because she looks fantastic. And not only does she look fantastic, Rory, but she can play fantastic. Texas Bulldog to Amy Craig by Denise Loden. But hey, Stacy Blitz says, I can punch people around too. And last but not least, the new whiplash from Denise Loden. What a period for the women, both Loden and Blitz, and it really uh, sets up for the second half. But of course, you always got to talk about Sean Atkinson, the quake. He is an animal. He came out, got it done. Unbelievable job by Sean Atkinson so far. The screamer by Atkinson was actually payback for the earlier Captain America, Bill Barker, leveling of Sean Atkinson. Wow, these two guys have really gone at it in the first half. Well, I call Captain America the cleanest man in the World Skating League, and I called Sean Atkinson the most colorful. Well, Captain America looked like a little bit of bleach on Sean Atkinson and drained some of that color right out of him. The Sun Dogs took this game on short notice. Denise Loden with her jersey ripped up by the New York Enforcers. And it all comes down to the new general manager, Kenneth Logue. Let's find out more about him from Julie Lynch. Thanks, guys. Season two has just begun. And already there's mayhem in the WSL. Denise Loden's had her uniform destroyed. And the New York Enforcers are creating chaos by refusing to skate. The question is, who's really creating the chaos? This all got started when the new general manager, Kenneth Logue III, decided to suspend New York Enforcer Captain Mark D'Amato. Take a look. The inaugural season of the WSL was tainted by accusations that the league promotes shameless sex and violence. In response, Commissioner Jerry Seltzer has appointed Wall Street wizard Kenneth Logue III as the new general manager of the league. Logue's mission is to bring back decency to a sport he loved as a child. Reforming this league will be a serious challenge, but I want to assure everybody here that I am the crusader for the job. This game has fallen to pieces. It's essentially clotted to the gills with excessive sex, violence, and depravity. Logue's mission has escalated into full-scale war. At what was supposed to be a positive photo shoot, power-hungry Logue suspended the diabolical enforcer, Mark D'Amato. Stop You think you scare me? Out of the room! Security! Seltzer! Next question. 
The next question comes from our own Broadway Danny Wolf. All right, it's halftime, and I'm here with the new general manager of the World Skating League, Kenny Loge the third. Actually, it's it's Kenneth, if you don't mind, Daniel. Kenneth Loge the third. Okay, I, I apologize for that. You just came into the World Skating League, and you're already committing mayhem. You suspended Mark D'Amato indefinitely for some comments he made to you at a press conference. But the agenda on you, buddy, is that you're trying to turn the league into, like, 1959 roller derby. What do you have on your mind? When I was a boy, in the 50s and 60s, roller derby was a clean, tough, respectable sport. I think that this game represents a lot of very traditional American values, like sportsmanship, teamwork, and toughness, and that transcends any era. So you said you're against sex and violence. Denise Loden tonight is showing a lot of skin. I bet you're opposed to that, too. Well, on, on principle, I am opposed to the kind of salacious display of skin that we've seen tonight. However, I understand the circumstances behind it. Uh, some rival tore up her uniform, and there's nothing we can do about that. We'll get her a new uniform. We'll put it behind us. However, if it happens again, if it happens again, I promise you, there will be heavy penalties to pay. He's talking about paying penalties. I'll tell you what, he might want to find this show because we have a lot to show you in the second half. The Bod Squad and the California Quakes leading the Sun Dogs 10 to 2. Stay right with us. Back in Las Vegas, Rory Marcus along with Lee Hawk Raymond. We're going into period three as the Florida Sun Dogs and California Quakes have had a physical battle so far. That's no. Debbie Rice closest to your screen for the uh, Florida Sun Dogs wearing the black jammers helmet and away she goes. And she gets out there. She's going to have to catch the California Quakes jammer, and that's Stacy Blitch. These two have been at each other since this game began. And this time, Stacy Blitch gets the better of Debbie Rice. Well, you see Stacy Blitch celebrating a little bit, a big smile on her face. She is just represents both finesse and power, Rory. You saw both of it right there, as well as a million-dollar smile. And she even blows a kiss to the crowd. That might have been aimed at you, my brother. <laughs> I think it's aimed at everybody here in this arena. I wish and it was aimed at me. Now she comes back where Debbie Rice is trying to block her, and Stacy Blitch holds her hands out as though to say, what, this little girl's going to stop me? Well, Debbie Rice, we know that she can skate, but she's trying to match physically with Stacy Blitch, and she's no match for her. Oh, my God! The super man, I think, from Denise Loden. She's a match for her if she can run her into Denise Loden, which she just did. Wow, that's going to take Stacy Blitch a second or two to get up and recover from that one. And now it's Denise who's blowing kisses to the crowd. What do you think about that? Well, if any of our fans were wondering if the relationship between Denise Loden and Shoot. Sean Atkinson ended, they've been totally disappointed. And did you see the look on the face of Stacy Blitch as she stormed after Denise Loden? Wow. Indeed, I did. She's not blowing kisses and smiling right now. She's out for revenge. And Denise Loden better keep up. And I in the back of her head for Stacy Blitch in the rest of this period. And they're battling right now in front of the pack as they try to get jammers out. And little Debbie Rice sneaks through on the inside, and she's out of there. And now for the Quakes to chase her is number 24, Amy Craig. And this is a perfect matchup. Both these guys have very similar skating styles, very deliberate, very bent over speed skating. Debbie Rice and Amy Craig, they both have unbelievable speed, perfect matchup. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for how to skate and skate fast, watch these two premier skaters of the World Skating League. Denise Loden back to assist again, and Debbie Rice passes the entire pack. Wow. With Denise Loden to block and Debbie Rice skating, the Sun Dogs are putting points on the board. And Denise Loden actually stole that away from the Quakes. I believe that Brooke Sunderman was trying to create a lift to the upper side of the track. And here you see Brooke Sunderman. But out of your screen was Denise Loden, who stole the play away as, as uh, Debbie Rice scores, calls off the jam, even thumbs up. Great job of the Florida Sun Dogs. She made it look easy and got four points for the Sun Dogs, but that still leaves them four points behind as the Quakes lead this game 10 to 6. I don't know if the Sun Dogs thought they were going to be skating in this game, but they were certainly ready nonetheless. And there's little Gina Lombardo out there for the Sun Dogs. She's out against uh, the Quakes, number 25, Jenny Matthews. And she's a newcomer. They're not, they're not used to seeing Jenny, Jennifer Matthews in the lineup. We're used to seeing Amy Craig, Stacy Bliss, but Jennifer Matthews, she's going to make a name for herself, number 25. A little bit of speed followed by a little bit of power. 
Now they've discussed a little strategy in the back of the pack. Let's see what they have in mind to get Jennifer Matthews some points. Looks like they have something in mind, doesn't it? Oh, that'll always work, won't it? Send somebody up over the rail, and there's two girls over the rail. And Matthews is going through to score points for the Quakes. And now she'll get a whip along the top of the track. And she got them all. Calls off the jam. And what a great job by the Quakes, Rory. I tell you, this was old and new. We saw Stacy Blitch with the blocker helmet on. We saw Jennifer Matthews with the jammer helmet on, scoring the points. And over here, who cares about scores? We've got Denise Loden and Stacy Blitch continuing the feud we've seen all night. Denise had to grab her top and make sure it was still <laughs> on after that encounter with Stacy Blitch. Stacy Blitch is looking very innocent. What did I do? Who, me? Might end up there anyway. <laughs> 13 to 6. The score now, and the Quakes have the lead. Denise Loden says, give me that helmet. And for those watching in the World Skating League who are unfamiliar with the rules, the white helmet that Denise Loden just put on is a blocker helmet. Last time she had the dark helmet on, which is a jammer helmet. Jammers can score points, blockers cannot. And here comes that matchup of jammers again as Debbie Rice gets out for the uh, Sun Dogs and Amy Craig follows her out for the Quakes. These two have been neck and neck all night long, and this time Amy Craig takes down Debbie Rice. Well, and Amy Craig out as a jammer. Last jam, we saw Jennifer Matthews, the newcomer, number 25. We haven't seen a bunch. Showed some great speed, scored some points. If Amy Craig has another true speed demon like Jennifer Matthews in the arsenal, Sean Atkinson and the Quakes got a lot of big guns to bring to the party, Rory. And look at Denise Loden windmill that right arm. Whoa! Amy Craig went right by. She got one, she got two. And she's still going with 15 seconds left in the jam. Denise trying to catch her from behind. She does. And takes her down, but Amy Craig scored the points. Well, that jam was the Amy Craig show. We saw her take down Debbie Rice out of the chute. We also saw her score a bunch of points. And then she ultimately knocked Debbie Rice down and again, down after one the jam. One yellow. Line. Two blue, one yellow. Two for the Quakes, one for the Sun Dogs, and it's 15 to seven if they get this jam started. Before the uh, clock runs out, there's about five seconds left. They'll have time to complete it. And I gotta say, it's been a really tough game so far for Debbie Rice of the Florida Sun Dogs, Rory. Well, she's been knocked down more times than she'd like. But don't count her out. They're down by eight points right now. You never know. Maybe Debbie Rice will come back and help them win this thing. But right now, it's the Quakes who once again have the lead jammer out. And it's Jamie Conamac. Well, she's got a good lead on the pack, too. Think about Jamie Conamac, similar to Sigmund Williams, who we saw for the Sundog men. Very hot and cold, Roar. We've seen great play out of her. We've seen great finesse out of her. But then all of a sudden, she'll go cold, not provide her team with much. And Sean Atkinson has said he's looking for a lot more out of Jamie Conamac if she's going to see the play in town. She's going to see a pretty tough blocker back here as Denise Loden winds that arm up again and says, come on, girl. And now there are two jammers back there for the Quakes trying to score points. And they're going to get Denise Loden and try and take her down. Four on one right now. Five on one. Oh, oh! look out, Denise. I think that was an attempt at a back attack. Oh, how about that from Stacy Blitz coming in late? Well, we talked about the outfit. Of Denise Lode, you gotta remember she has no pads under there. She is no, does not have regulation padding. That has to hurt. And the crowd loves it. Oh, they're playing to the crowd, and this crowd in Las Vegas love that last maneuver. And meanwhile, Denise Loden is still down in the infield. Well, speaking of loving the maneuver, Stacy Blitz was celebrating, as are many of these quakes, but what a loss to the Florida Sun Dogs be the loss of Denise Loden, Roy. The men getting set to take us home in the final period, Bill Barker of the Sun Dogs, and of course, the Ack Attack, Sean Atkinson and the California Quakes, with the Quakes up by 10, 17 to 7. Back at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, and Broadway Danny Wolf has Sean Atkinson. All right, Sean, comment on what just happened to your fiance Denise. I mean, Stacy put a hurting on her. Yeah, I thought it was a little overboard. Stacy went crazy. Um, I like the initial hit, but the comeback, that was ridiculous. Because um, I still love her, and I don't want anything to happen to her. Well, let's talk about the amount of skin she's been showing has really gotten under your skin. Yeah, I tell you what, if her mom's watching, 
Your mom didn't raise you like that, girl. And I'm not dating a girl like that. That is uncalled for. Wow. I'm not sure how Denise was raised, but if Mrs. Loden is watching, she can't be too happy about how her daughter and future son-in-law are getting along. We'll see how it affects Sean in the final period. Tony Santiago beats the pack out of the start of the jam, and he's got a good lead on two Sundog jammers trying to catch him. Let's see if Santiago can reach the back of that pack and score some points before uh, Gary Lockamy and Sigmund Williams can catch up to it. Well, in the, first, in the second period when we saw Santiago, we didn't see the low router once we got out. He may have matured a little bit, Rory. May not want to be celebrating, may be more looking just to play and to score. And the Quakes already getting some points as Atkinson takes out two in the back of the pack. That was definitely an act attack. Wow. He said it. They're going a little crazy. <laughs> and the Quakes have a huge 12-point lead now, 20-8. to eight. Well, Gary Lockerbie used to skate for these very California Quakes who he's going against. But you said it there, the act attack. We, we know he could scream and yell. We know he could talk to his girlfriend's mother. Look at the size of the mouth on that guy. But there's no arguing. He could bring it. He could bring power like nobody in the world skating league, Rory. I'll tell you, he laid his body out that time. And the Quakes have a 20-8 to lead in this game. And they have the lead jammer out again. That's a number 25 for the Quakes, Brian Krebs. Oh, and Williams caught him in the uh, back of the skates and knocked him down to the track. Well, you saw Brian Krebs slide down. A lot of the skaters, because of the humidity here in Las Vegas, have said that the, the track is much slicker than they usually like. They've been testing certain wheels. We saw them out here this afternoon testing all kinds of wheels. And I tell you, a lot of these guys have not found the right combination, Rory. You're seeing some of that play out right now. Williams could skate uh, through the town limits of Las Vegas in about 40 seconds. And right now, he's trying to... <laughs> Pick up some points in the back of the pack. Let's see what kind of strength he has, though, as he tries to get by Rusty Montgomery. And Montgomery grabs him by the back of the neck. He's going to put him over. Oh! He gave him up to Atkinson. And the skyscraper by Sean Atkinson. Sigmund Williams receiving the signature move by Sean Atkinson. I hate to give Sean Atkinson even more airtime, but how can you not? We talked about him last jam. We talked about him this jam. I think Sigmund Williams is going to be talking about him for about the next 15 hours. Deep into the sleep that he's going to go to. He may be asleep right now a little early. Well, you talk about the act attack. He's got the problems with the general manager of the league, Kenneth Lowe. He has the problems with his fiance out there on the track wearing next to nothing, and now he's going to take it out on some of the Sun Dogs. Well, he has one thing nobody can take away from him, at least for a while, though, Rory, and that's a Founders Cup championship he won last year. Nobody can take that away from him ever, huh? As the jam is on, it's 20 to 9, 40 seconds left in the jam. The Quakes have the lead, and the Sun Dogs desperately trying to catch up. They've got a chance to do it right now. They took Brian Krebs out of there pretty easily, and the Sun Dogs have Sam Martin and Jonathan Russell. And there's the Ack attack again in the back of the pack, trying to prevent any Sun Dog points. So far, Sean Atkinson's doing his job as a blocker in back, isn't he? Well, he is, but look at Jonathan Russell. That poor guy looks like he, look out, he didn't miss a deal in the offseason. Oh! But I don't care if he put on 15 pounds, the back attack from Sean Atkinson. This guy's going to work. It's the first game out. You think he'd rest after the Founders Cup championship? Not Sean Atkinson. Three jams in a row. He has put the Sun Dogs down. 20 to 9 Quakes. They picked up two there. It's 20 to 11. We're back in just a minute. Sean Atkinson, he takes his place in a familiar spot in the penalty box. They had to help little Sam Martin of the Sun Dogs off the track, and this has been an extremely physical game between these two rivals. He's taking a beating here today. He and Debbie Rice, both the Sun Dogs, look like they're just taking their lumps here right out of the shoe bar. Posse Shaleen for the uh, Sun Dogs, one of the highest scorers in the league, is out there leading this jam, and they're two on one against the California Quakes as Shaleen is helped out by Gary Lockamy. Let's see if they can knock down and take out the Quakes jammer, Tom Smith. Posse Shaleen's going to call it off. Lockamy called it off. And we'll wait.
wait for the official ruling and see what kind of points they give the Sun Devils. Wow, they got six, and they're right back in the game. The six big points, Captain America showing his leadership. Great players show their leadership in big games and big times, and Rusty Montgomery saw Captain America firsthand there, Rory. One jam left in this game. It's 20 to 17. The Quakes in blue have the lead over the Florida Sun Dogs. The Sun Dogs need at least four points to try and win this game. And let's see who they send out on the jam. They're going to send out their speed skater. The Sun Dogs send out number eight, Sigmund Williams. And Sean Atkinson has grabbed the black helmet for the Quakes, and he takes Williams out of the play. Well, and Sean Atkinson has a jammer helmet on fresh out of the penalty box. He says, look, this game's in jeopardy. It's getting late in the ball game. I'm going to put a jammer helmet on and bring home victory, people. I don't care if I'm the Founders Cup champion and it's the first game out. I am not going to lose this game. Sean Atkinson, good for you. 20 seconds left in the jam as Atkinson approaches the back of the pack. And it looks like the Quakes are going to score a lot of points on this jam and go on to victory in this game. Good oh, man. Good time. Good time. Bill Barker is down. Stacy Pitt celebrates. I got four blue. Four, four Quakes blue points. Point. Sun Dogs all over the track, and they're even off the track. The Quakes have won the game in their first game back after winning the Founders Cup last year. And Sean Marshall is livid. Don Laster in between Sean Marshall and Sean Atkinson. The Ack attack puts on the jammer helmet, Rory, brings home the victory, and he's still got enough left to celebrate a little bit. The Sun Dogs can be as livid as they want to, but chalk up an L to the Florida Sun Dogs as Sean Atkinson celebrates the victory. And don't forget, Hawk, the Sun Dogs weren't even scheduled to play this game. It was supposed to be the New York Enforcers in the first game of the season. Well, and right, and Mark Devoto and the Enforcers are a no-show, but Sean Atkinson wasn't a no-show. Captain America, Bill Barker sees a little bit, and Sean Atkinson takes Sigmund Williams down and pays the track quick blue. The Enforcers did have some effect on this game, though, by ripping up Denise Loden's outfit. It made her wear a new outfit, actually. Right now, she and Sean Atkinson are together with our own Broadway Danny Wolf in the infield. Okay, I'm here with the I don't think not so happy couple, Denise Loden and Sean Atkinson. Couple things to address Wait, first. Let me tell you something. Denise's mom's watching. The only reason I went nuts, Mrs. Loden, is because look at the way your daughter's dressed. You're dressed like a tramp. I apologize for those remarks, first of all, Denise. I talked to Kenneth Logue, the third at halftime. He had made mentions also, actually throughout the second half, about your attire. If you ever come out, according to him, dressed like this again, you will be suspended and fined, just like D'Amato. I tell you what, I checked the rule books, okay? There's nothing in the rule books that say that I can't wear this, and I'm gonna wear it. It's the only choice that I had after the enforcers ripped up my uniform. It was the only choice I had or I couldn't skate. And I'm gonna skate no matter what. And I tell you what, now that I think about it, I mean, last year we let the bod squad rule as far as uh, sexiness and all that went. We work hard on our bodies. We're allowed to flaunt it. All right, Denise, good luck next week. All right, back to you right now, Rory and Hawk. Thank you, Danny. Try to remember that as you get dressed tomorrow, Hawk, that the sexiness is not limited to the bot squad. What a game we had here tonight. The California Quakes whip the Florida Sun Dogs 24-17. Well, I haven't read the rule book Denise Loden is looking at, but I tell you what, I want an advanced copy. But where are the New York enforcers? Another big question, Rory. For you, Hawk, for Broadway Danny Wolf, for Julie Lynch, I'm Rory Marcus. A kiss goodnight, everybody.